Welcome everybody. Today's video is called How Hard Is Your Heart? Very important scripture to look at, amen, today. Um, David says, Search me, O God, and try me, and see if there be any wicked way in me. Therefore, it's our duty, praise be to God, amen, to ask the question, how hard is our heart, amen? And like God said in Revelation chapter 2 to the church of Ephesus, remember where thou fell, praise be to God, and repent. And that connects with how hard is your heart. If we don't, amen, study and try to see actually <coughs> how hard our heart is, our heart is in connection to the scripture. That's the mirror that we look on. The perfect law of liberty, where James says that someone who looks in the mirror and forget what it looks like. Well, that's what you can do, amen, with the natural mirror. But the spiritual mirror, amen, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all, amen, the, the, the wicked queen said. But what God asks us when we look at the right mirror, Amen. God gives us the reflection and shows us actually how hard our heart is uh, that we might understand. Amen. What it is that God, amen, amen, it instructs us to do to soften our hearts. Praise be to God. As Amos says, prepare <coughs> to meet thy God. And prepare to meet thy God is a self-reflection guided by the Holy Spirit of the living God. Praise be to God. Amen. So before we amen, look at them, um, how do we find out how hard a heart is? Well, you find Romans chapter 12 gives us the best clue to that. It says, present your bodies a living sacrifice to God. This is what it says. You may prove, find out, discover what is the acceptable not just accept the one perfect will of God for your life. That is only possible. People are always praying, amen. Father, please, you know, show me your will. But yet they're not prepared to do the first part, which is to present your body a living sacrifice, amen, before God. By presenting your bodies a living sacrifice before God, God will be able to show you what the perfect will of God to your heart, which means what? Your heart will be soft enough, praise the living God, to be able to submit to the perfect will of God, like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he sweated and wept, as it were, great drops of blood. And it says in Hebrews, he cried strong tears. There's a sign of a soft heart, prepared to do what it takes to find the will of God for your life. But if you Having got that attitude, you will not discover what is the perfect and will of God for your life. And therefore, you'll be led into things uh, which is established through a hard heart. And these are the things that cause us troubles in our life, brethren, which we'll see, amen, all through the scriptures. Because how can you have <coughs> Jacob, the father of Israel, the father of, of the 12 tribes, and there we see these very tribes that God is going to establish a nation of Israel. All of them rise up to kill their brother Joseph. And it's not just the, the killing of Joseph. The, the pain that they were causing their father. How could they do that? How could they cause such pain to their father? Except they didn't ask the question that we're asking today. How hard is our heart? And if we don't ask this question today, what's going to happen is that we're going to heart each other. Praise be to God. Amen. And um, let me have a look here. Yeah, even Jesus is saying to Israel, even Moses gave you these commands for the hardness of your heart. Amen. God will end up speaking to you but he'll, he'll only be able to speak to you through the hardness of your heart. Like God said to Miriam, Miriam. And people boast, God speaks to me. God speaks to me in visions and dreams. But look what God said to Miriam. Miriam, 
I speak to you in dreams and in visions which are dark sayings, but not so with Moses. Meaning that, meaning that even in the prophecies and the things that God is speaking to you from, it's coming and only can be speak through through a hard heart, which makes them dark sayings. You never step into the perfect will of God for your life and you end up with the husband that was not perfect for you. You end up with the wife that's not perfect for you. You end up with the job that's not perfect for you. So many things you end up in the church is not perfect for you. Why? Because you've not asked the question, how hard is my heart? Praise be to God. And, and and I think with the, that's it on that section. So let us go into this video, amen, with a humble heart, amen, 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 willing to ask God now, ask him now, how hard is my heart? And what we're going to be doing now is looking at many examples of the Bible where the hardness of heart affected even the best people of God and how God addressed the heart. And we're living in an age um, um, we have to prepare ourselves for the tribulation time. Amen. If we're not prepared, and how do we prepare? By having softer hearts. If our hearts are not soft, coming towards the tribulation, it won't be the Antichrist's fault by which you stumble and fall. It will be because you did not address the hardness and the softness of our heart that we need to address them. We're reaching a time today, amen, where people watch violence and people will listen and preach about Rabbi Zechariah and they'll all speak things that seem so holy and nobody truly has got a soft heart, a heart that's ready to weep, amen, before the living God. And we need to weep before him on a daily basis with strong tears the hearts might be soft to handle the days that are coming upon the church. Praise be to God. Let's start at the beginning of the Bible. You find the Gospels when Jesus has risen from the grave. Amen. And Jesus has sent Mary to tell the disciples, praise God. Amen. Amen. None of them believe her. And Jesus had to reprove them because of the hardness of the heart. So here's the very gospel that we have today began with hard hearts that would not believe when someone came, a faithful witness, a witness who would weep at Jesus' feet, amen, in Simon's house, amen, and cry upon Jesus' feet. Watch this. Not one of the disciples Jesus would share with them that he's going to die and suffer None of them would pick up, amen, what he was saying to them. And that Jesus, amen, would Jesus need comfort? No, they're so busy thinking about themselves, amen. But only Mary would listen and would hear and begin to weep upon his feet. Amen, amen, as Jesus said, for my body. Oh, but the others couldn't hear. Are we so busy with our lives? We can't pick up how Jesus is feeling. Are we so busy with our own lives? We can't pick up, amen, the comfort that Jesus needs, amen? When the Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. Are we so busy with our own lives that we're grieving the Holy Spirit with our hard hearts and none of them could comfort Jesus but only Mary? Look at that. So not only did they not believe Mary when she came with the best news ever, amen, they couldn't even comfort Jesus while he was in sorrow even in Gethsemane he was there and they couldn't even pray with him now look at that after everything Jesus done in front of them only Mary had a heart that was soft enough praise be to God to comfort Jesus and that makes us look at ourselves. take a good look at yourself which category do you fit into do you fit into Mary or do you fit into the others? I think we fit into the others. And therefore we have to begin to understand what is it that we need to do on a daily basis to soften our hearts. Even with the parable of the rich man in Luke chapter 16, I believe it is, sorry. When he um, um, is in hell and he's weeping and mourning. And he's looking at Lazarus, the poor man that was taken into Abraham's bosom. And he asked, please let someone go and rise from the dead and warn them. And Abraham says, son, 
He said, if someone rose from the dead, they won't believe. Because if they had Moses and the prophets, amen, they didn't believe them, then they're not, then they're not going to believe if someone rose from the dead. Look at this, what people are missing from this. If we're not moved by the cripples who suffer, by those who are blind, by those who are, who are sick. That's what Jesus says, when I was hungry, you, you fed me. When I was sick, you came and visited me. If we're not moved, amen, by those who suffer as cripples and those who are blind, to be able to thank God for everything we have today. We, we, I don't need to, to, to see Jesus resurrected to believe, amen, because I'm already moved by the beggars and by those things. But if we're not moved by these simple things, the big things of God are not going to move the hardness of our heart. That's what Abraham was saying. When you were alive, amen, you should have looked at M. Lazarus as he was in agony with his sores as the dog licked him and a compassion in him. If you wouldn't, your heart, heart wouldn't be moved by that. Even if someone rose from the dead before your eyes, it wouldn't shake the hardness of your heart. Praise be to God. Amen. And that was a warning to Israel. So look at it. We see the hardness of heart affecting the disciples. Only Mary believed. Only Mary would comfort Jesus. And here we hear Israel being reproved. Amen. Amen. And for God saying, your heart's so hard, even if someone resurrected from the dead, you wouldn't believe. Amen. And the reason why we begin like that, to know the seriousness of this condition of heart, heart that we need and how we deeply, 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 as Isaiah 58 says, Amen. This is the fast that I have chosen for you. Joel chapter 2, call a solemn assembly. Amen. To me that will fast and will weep. Praise be to God. We need to begin to seek God in fasting and praying. Why? Because that's what softens the heart. That's why Jesus said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness but they shall be filled. And, amen. And the church has become hard today. We're a hard people. We're hard towards each other. We become hard towards suffering. We never cry when we preach. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. We should cry on a daily basis before God. Amen. Why? Because we've left out the blessing of those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Begin to fast and pray and hungry. Amen. That your heart may become soft. Praise be to God. Amen. We're going to be looking at the Apostle Peter in just one second. So now let's look at Peter. Amen. At the beginning of the leadership of the church. Peter is now leading the church. And what does Jesus say to him? Peter, rise and eat. And he says, not so, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And then um, uh, Paul has to rebuke Peter in Galatians chapter 2 to his face because he will not eat with the Gentiles. He pulls away from them. Again, things because of the hardness of the heart. Jesus already showed him to rise and eat. But he just couldn't get the message. Why? Because the hardness of our... And we need to address it because there's things that Jesus will say to you that you just will not do. Many of you are crying say, Oh, I wish God would talk to me. If God talked to you, you would not do it. God in Deuteronomy 18, they, 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 the, the, the Israel heard the voice of God and they said, Please don't speak to us anymore. Let Moses speak to us lest we die. What does that mean? The hearts were so hard that hearing the voice of God was killing them. And many of you, amen, if God was to talk to you, you would spiritually die because you would never do the things that he would ask of you. And this is why many of you have to settle for not the perfect will of God in your life because your hearts are so hard, you would die if God spoke to you. Praise be to God. Amen. And of course, you even have um, um, Paul saying that Peter, Peter, sorry, saying that Paul's letters were hard to understand. They're not hard to understand. They're only hard to understand if your heart's hard. If you find things difficult to understand, it's because your heart is hard. It's not that the things are hard to understand. Praise be to God. Amen. And you have, amen, even Peter 
when he's in prison, the angel had to come and smite Peter on the side and wake him up. Why? Amen. Because the heart's hard. Sometimes God has to come and smite us. Why? Because we're fast asleep. The hearts are hard. It's causing us to sleep to things that we should be awake to. Praise be to God. Oh, God help us. Amen. To have hearts that are soft. And there we have Moses. Now look at Moses. <clears throat> the beginning of the law. Moses was the meekest man on the earth. Wow, what a title to have. What a title. Is that good? Look at this. This verse shows you how pitiful we are as a people. No other the Bible says. There is none good, no not one. Oh Lord, help us to soften our heart. We pray. Come on, saints. You can't listen to this without crying unto God. Moses was the meekest man on the earth. And what did he say to God? Amen. He refused to circumcise his son. And that God, amen, was on his way to kill him. And only Moses' wife saved him. Moses did not want to go. Amen. Until he provoked God to anger. Amen. Until God had to send him Aaron. And of course, Aaron ends up failing miserably and makes the golden calf. Moses refused to speak to the rock. Instead, he hit the rock. Amen. Are we hitting each other? How many times are we slapping and hitting, doing things harsh when they should be done gently? Amen. This is because of the hardness of our heart. And in Numbers 11, Moses mourns to God. Why has God given him such a people to look after? Amen. And he grumbles. That is a domino effect from Numbers 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. All of Israel mourns. And it nearly, God nearly destroys the lot of them, beginning at Moses, praise be to God. And that's the meekest man on earth. It's not enough. It's not enough. That's why we need him that comes from above. Jesus said, he that comes from above is greater than he that comes from beneath. Because if you're the meekest man on the earth, you're going to fail miserably. Amen. So we need that which comes from above. That's why the Bible said, set your affections on things above where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. If not, your heart's going to be hard and you're going to end up mourning and grumbling and smiting things, hitting people, striking out at people instead of acting with the meekness that can only come from above. Praise be to God. Amen. And these teachings are so serious. It shows us how on earth are we going to be ready from the last times if even these people, the meekest men on earth, stumbled and fell? We need to really, truly be ready for the last days. That's why the Bible says a church without spot or wrinkle or any such things, it's time for us to examine ourselves and to soften our hearts before the last days. Praise be to God. We're now going to be looking at Abraham in one minute. You see, and the reason why these people of God speak to God the way they do, why? Because Jesus is so gentle. We don't realize because we don't see him how gentle he really is. He's so gentle that Moses and Peter could just say no. Look at that. How could they say that to him? How could they say that to him because he's so gentle? This is why, amen, in Revelation 5, you have the difference between the lamb and the lion. Yes, Jesus is the lamb. But he's going to rule with the lion. Why? Because the lamb nature of Jesus, people will always, always take advantage of that. Praise be to God. So God has to put a lion there to stop them falling into that trap. Now you have Abraham. Abraham, the friend of God. Amen. When God speaks to him, he laughs. And Sarah laughs. And God said, why laughest thou? Why? Why are you laughing? Praise be to God. Because I am so soft that you can laugh. Amen. God never said he's going to go on the way to destroy Sodom. And then Abraham begins to question God's mercy. If there be 10, if there be 5, if there be 50. Is not God the judge of the earth? Will he not do right? Is Does he need your help with his mercy? Is God's mercy, amen, 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 bowing down to your mercy? Praise be to God. But this is what we do. The hardness of our heart makes us not 
see things clearly. So how are we going to be able to strengthen the feeble knees in the last days, except we begin to address the hardness of the heart right now, this very day. Praise be to God. Amen. And that's what these examples show you. We have to be a people in the last days. Look at this. Better than any people that have ever lived. Why? Because we have the days the Bible says there'll be none like it before or after. And what does that mean? Therefore, there must be a people none like it all before. That's what Joel chapter 2 said. The army, that there's been none like it before. Amen. We need to try. We need to exceed the righteousness greater than Abraham, greater than Moses. A, a, a church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. No hardness of heart. Praise God. As God said to Abraham, walk before for me and be thou perfect. <clears throat> As Apostle Paul said, we need to strive towards the high calling of God that's inside of Christ Jesus. Praise be to God. And therefore you go on to Jeremiah 20, does the same. When Jeremiah has been afflicted, amen, Jeremiah begins to say to God in Jeremiah 20, in Jeremiah chapter 4, amen, he's saying, amen, I will speak no more in your name. You've deceived me, O God. You see how the hardness of a heart thinks that God has let us down? We think God has abandoned us? Amen. When your heart's soft, you could never feel such a thing. You'll only see that the suffering Suffering is perfecting you. The suffering is strengthening you. God has never forsaken you. Amen. But when your heart is hard, you'll think you're abandoned. And that's Jeremiah. Amen. We really need to take note of this. We don't suffer like these prophets. So how are we going to react when that suffering? And look at the saints. It is coming upon all of us. Even the fullness of the book of Job is all going to be fulfilled in all of our lives in the tribulation time. Amen. So how are we going to react? Amen. God wants us. Remember the Bible says, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Oh, Lord. Make straight the group of paths. Now is the time to prepare the way for these days. Don't leave it until suffering comes. Don't leave it until rejection comes. Begin to call upon the Lord. Begin to thirst and to hunger. Begin to chastise yourself with fasting and prayer. Begin to seek God that he may soften your heart before that day. Praise be to God or you'll be. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. Like Jonah who said no. Amen. And he was forced into obedience. That will be the church to the end days. Uh, that God will save you. But you'll be forced into obedience. And the end of it. After God has saved Nineveh. Jonah was angry. You still carry the anger with you. Amen. Praise be to God. After God has done what he's done. God doesn't want you to be like that. Amen. God wants you to willingly obey. And not to be forced into obey. Because what happens is. When God forces you like Jonah. Though Jonah did it. He was still angry with God. Amen. And many of us today are angry with God for things that we may think is secret, but God knows that we're angry. Amen. That we think God has forced things upon us. It's not that God has forced things upon you. It's that you weren't willing to say, Jesus, not my will, Lord, but thine. We were made and created for the will of God, not our own. It is our heart, hearts that thinks we've been dealt with wrong cards amen praise be to god hallelujah and therefore we're more or less finished now because the, the the time is getting away we go on to even adam in his perfect state rebelled against god what does that teach you even when you think you're doing brilliant amen be careful because even when you're doing brilliant and you're really obedient to God, and then you're in a state of being in Eden, and where everything is brilliant, amen, the hardness of your heart can trip you up at any time, praise be to God, amen, it's like the Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 19 and 20, God came to him, 
and the Spirit prophesied to him, don't go to Jerusalem. And Paul, praise God, ended up going, amen, when he could have, if he hadn't gone to Jerusalem, he could have stayed and strengthened the churches that desperately need to be, to be helped, amen. But what happens is that we get an understanding of what we think, and this is more of the righteous thing, righteous to say we think we know what is perfect in our relationship with God but only God knows praise be to God you may think by being a martyr is the best way to go but God don't want you to be a martyr God wants you to stay on the earth teaching the church which is going to as Paul said be infiltrated by dogs amen but what did Paul do he didn't listen to the prophecy and he chose something that was good to die in Rome, but there was a greater way. And that's what Jesus said, not my will, but yours be done. There is always a greater way, but our hearts have to be soft to seek for the way that's greater. Amen. As we pray in prayer, praise be to God. And of course, if we don't take a good look at ourselves, we're left with the last example, which is Satan. He said there came a day when the sons of God had to present themselves before God and Satan came amongst them. It's Satan loves the hard heart. And Satan entered into the heart of Judas. Satan loves the hard heart. And he came into the, into the prince of God and Satan begins to argue with God and tell God what's right and what's wrong. And how many times do we do that in our life? We tell God what's right and what's wrong we choose our own wives we choose our own jobs amen we don't go through Gethsemane to find and to seek and to present our bodies a living sacrifice that we may find out what's the perfect will of God in our lives and we settle always for second best why because our hearts are hard the prophet says break up the hard ground amen this is the fast God has chosen for you. Take one day a week from six in the morning all the way to six at night and fast just by drinking water. Please do that. From now on, one day a week. Let there never be in for the rest of your life one day of the week that you don't commit to God. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice to God and fast. And what you'll start to slowly start to see is the heart will start becoming soft that we might be prepared for the last days that when we're under pressure and under rebuke and under sorrow, amen, that we'll do what David said, Lord, it is written in the book, in the volume of the book, that I delight to do thy will. Praise be to God. And not be like the other great men we saw. They all fell because of the hardness of the heart. And it will happen to us. That's why we need in these last days to seek God more than any other generation that ever lived. An army that there was none like it. Because the time we're going into, there's never been a time like it. But are we matching it by being a people that there's never been the likes of before? I don't think so. That's why we need the Bible. The Bible says, One crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord before it's too late. Before it's too late for you. Praise be to God. As Apostle Paul said, Therefore I take heed, lest after preaching others in, I myself could become a castaway. Paul recognized, even at that state of his life, it was possible for his heart to harden. And after all the work he's done, he himself becomes a castaway. It's time to soften our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen.